why I bought my wife a Mac, then a Chromebook, and then a Mac. Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. If you end up finding this video at all interesting or helpful, be sure and hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. That really does help others find the information they're looking for as they search, and of course, helps me out. So I updated my wife's computer again earlier this year, and it's an interesting scenario that I think teaches a few lessons about what to do along the way. It was unexpected. But the process, I think, was interesting. So let me talk a little bit first about what I call prehistory before these machines. My wife's had a computer for many, many years. We had various PCs, mostly were hand-me-downs from me because her needs were rarely as extensive or as, as demanding as mine have been. So in her shop. She had a retail shop for many years here at home. She had a computer that was usually a PC, a desktop PC, a hand-me-down. Several years ago, and I wrote an article about this, I purchased for her a new computer and I made the decision to get her a MacBook Air. The MacBook Air at that time, this is like seven or almost eight years ago now, um, was a very modern new machine. It was very powerful, but from my perspective and watching how she uses the machine, it was light, it was portable, it did everything she needed. Because at that point, most of what she was doing was online or could be moved online. For example, she had been using Outlook on the PC, but when I introduced her to using webmail, then that Outlook requirement went away. We actually ended up shifting a significant amount of what she did on a day-to-day -day basis to online work. That meant that almost any computer would do, and the form factor, the portability, and the utility of the MacBook Air was a great, great fit. She actually used that for several years. Now, last year, early last year, I wrote that I had purchased her another new computer. The reason was fairly simple. The MacBook itself was starting to feel a little underpowered. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But also the battery life was simply uh, not lasting as long and it's not a replaceable battery. So the bottom line was that, yeah, she couldn't use it for very long off of battery. That was starting to get a little bit annoying. There were some network issues. There was potential performance issues. I decided, you know what? Let's do something different. So I got her. Um, a Google Pixelbook Go, which is a Chromebook. Once again, as I said, most of what she does is online. So almost any sufficiently powerful computer that can run a web browser will do. And in fact, it worked relatively well. It was a nice machine. We still have it. I use it as a keyboard myself. There's a problem. I made a mistake. And the mistake I made was underestimating what processing power some websites might require. In fact, it all comes down to Facebook. Facebook, as it turns out, is a place where my wife spends a lot of time. She connects with a lot of people and a lot of interests on Facebook. But Facebook, as it turns out, is a very complicated and demanding web page to display in your browser. As it turned out, the machine was just, well, pokey when she was using it on Facebook. And that was a continued kind of annoyance. Now, the other issue, like I mentioned earlier, there were network issues that I had thought were related to the MacBook Air. Occasionally, we would drop or lose connections. We'd have to reconnect. And I basically was blaming the older technology in that MacBook Air as being the problem. The Pixelbook did not make that go away. The problems were still around. So that was a separate problem that I ended up solving a different way. I ended up rebuilding out the network here at home to be more complete, more robust. And indeed, that solved that problem and a number of others. So what we were left with was this pixel book that it worked. Uh, the battery life was wonderful. Uh, she could take it wherever she wanted to go. And she actually took it traveling a couple of times uh, and used it and used it well. But there was still this, I'll just call it an irritation with using any demanding website, Facebook being the one. 
I should have purchased a more powerful machine. I should have gone high when it comes to the stuff that can't be changed. I got her, uh, you know, the RAM she needed. The disk space wasn't didn't really matter, but I really should have considered that the processing power demands would only grow over time. I did not really consider that they might already be more than this particular machine could handle. And it was intentionally a low end machine because I didn't expect the demands to be that high. So given that I had three options, ask my wife to basically live with it, which I think she was willing to do restarting the browser every once in a while or refreshing the page when she might not otherwise need to and just sort of deal with the periodic frustration uh, that would have then been Facebook. I could give her the MacBook Air back, the old original machine. It was still around and still working. And given that we knew that the Pixelbook didn't really solve the problems we were trying to solve by getting a new machine, there was really no reason not to go back to the older machine if that was going to be a little bit more stable. Ultimately, it wouldn't have made that much of a difference. They were operating about the same. So the Pixelbook Go had the better battery life we probably would have stayed with that were it not for one new thing. The third option, of course, would have been to just swap out the Chromebook for a more powerful Chromebook. That's the, I'll call it the obvious answer. Like I said, I undershot on the characterization of what that machine should have been. About the time all this was happening, though, Apple announced their new M1 processor and their first couple of machines included the MacBook Air. I took a look at that machine and thought, okay, that's pretty cool. I'll probably look into it someday if it turns out to live up to the hype. Over the forthcoming weeks, there was a lot of press about these specific machines and how the battery life was better than expected, how the processing power was better than expected, uh, the kinds of things that you don't normally hear, right? Usually computing companies, when they release new hardware, overpromise and underdeliver. This appears to have been a case of Apple underpromising and overdelivering. The machines have actually been really, really well received across the board. Well, that really was all the excuse I needed. I ended up getting her one of the new Apple MacBook Airs with the M1 processor. It's been great. The websites are working well. The internet is working well. It's portable. It has battery life. It is the machine for her. It's perfect. I maximized the amount of RAM in the machine. It's got more RAM than she needs. But since it's not upgradable, that means, again, I'm shooting for the long term here based on the previous MacBook Air, which is still in use. It looks like this machine could last a very long time. And given that software will continue to get bigger, more RAM is always better. I did not go for the maximum hard drive. There's not a lot of storage needed on that machine. And if there ever is, an external drive would solve that problem quite nicely. So it's got the battery life. It's got the processor power. She's very, very happy with the machine that she's been using now. Probably, I'll say, for about a month and a half. I mentioned that the old MacBook Air is still in use. It's still a great machine. It's still a functional machine. We now have it in our family room where it sits as, I call it my IMDB reference machine. Whenever we're watching things on TV or I want to take some notes or just do something while I'm in the family room, it's there. The difference is that it is always plugged into power. The battery life just isn't there. And I'm not spending time on really heavy duty websites like Facebook. So it's still in service and I expect it will be for some time. The one major change that I've made to that machine is that it's now running Windows 10. Using Boot Camp, I went ahead and installed Windows 10 on the old MacBook Air. That's not something that's going to be available on the newer machines with a different processor. But since the older MacBook Air is using the same processor family that PCs use, this is an option. And because I wanted to run the same software that I run on my desktop and my other laptop, it just made sense to give Boot Camp a try. 
And it's also been a fine experience. The old MacBook Air runs Windows 10 Home really well. So that's the machine. That's the process. That's what happened. I got her a MacBook Air. We were very happy with it for many, many years. We got a Chromebook. I undershot the specifications and it turned out not to be the correct machine for her. We replaced it now with a new MacBook Air with the M1 processor and it's working wonderfully. I hope that helps you understand some of the thought process that goes into purchasing new machines, the kinds of things that are important, the kind of decisions that are made, and to be completely honest, the kind of mistakes that are sometimes made and what we need to do about them. For links related to all this, for the original article, for comments and more, visit askleo.com slash 129482. I'm Leo Notenboom. This is askleo.com. Take care.